Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 16th TechNet conference session on EVM2, a new tool for resilient programs and continuous immunization supply chain performance improvement. In this session, we are highlighting the new and improved effective vaccine management tool we call the EVM2. Efficient and effective supply chain system is one of the most crucial elements of an immunization program to ensure the, supply, the vaccines and supplies are available in the right place at the right time and in the right condition in order to provide sustained quality health services to the communities. Now more new and new vaccines and health technologies are becoming available and they are more expensive and bulkier than traditional vaccines. Countries are facing logistical challenges to accurately forecast their needs, maintain adequate stock level, reduce wastage and prevent equipment breakdown. Maintaining high standards of performance can only be achieved if all the links in the vaccine supply chain are effectively monitored, assessed, and improved based on the latest principles of good storage and distribution practice. Our speakers will tell us how EVM can help in achieving this. The EVM initiative was first launched in 2003, and since then more than 150 assessments have been conducted globally. Taking into account the experiences and lessons learned from these assessments, the EVM has evolved into something more practical, useful, and responsive to the country's needs to understand the performance and status of their immunization supply chain. So now to give you the overview of what's coming, we will start the session by showing a video introduction of the EVM process. Then we will have three presentations and two case studies. The first speaker is Mr. Dan Brigden, Technical Officer in the Vaccine Supply Chain and Logistics Team of EPI in the WHO headquarters. He will present the key features of the EVM2 tool. The next speaker is Mr. Solo Kone, the Head of the Vaccine Supply Chain and Logistics Teams of EPI in the WHO headquarters. He will discuss how the, the support and approach to EVM are adapting to the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Then, we will have two case studies. First, we will learn about the EVM experience in Iraq from Dr. Firas Jabbar, National EPI Manager, and Engineer Mudher Sabay, the National Cold Chain Officer, both from the Ministry of Health in Iraq. Then we will hear about the Nigerian experience from Dr. Hajiya Kubura Daradara, the Director of the Logistics and Health Commodities of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency in Nigeria. And finally, Mr. Dimitri Davidov, Partnerships Manager of the Program Division in UNICEF headquarters, will give the last presentation on how the EVM2 is contributing to the continuous improvements of the immunization supply chain. You may post your questions in the chat box. You may or may not write the name of the speaker whom you wanted to address the question. Thank you all. And at this point, we will now show the video. Getting life-saving vaccines to the children who need them takes constant and careful management of the immunization supply chain. Over the years, the Effective Vaccine Management Initiative, or EVM, has been hugely successful in helping countries achieve this. Today, EVM offers a simpler, more customizable way to assess and improve the vaccine supply chain, ensuring that facilities are well-stocked and adhere to best practices. Better still, EVM also becomes a tool for continuous improvement in the future. So what makes EVM so effective? Let's take a quick look. First of all, EVM isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. It can be used in various ways, depending on who you are and the type of assessment you want to conduct. For example, Robert is a key decision maker in his country's Ministry of Health. He wants to conduct a full national EVM assessment. He can identify the right people to implement it, set out the national priorities, and plan any follow-up targeted assessments, which can be tailored to his country's unique needs. We call Robert an EVM leader. Robert designates Sunisa to take care of EVM implementation in his country. Sunisa will set up the EVM tool, manage assessments and oversee the data collection process, and analyze the results. We call Sunisa a National EVM Manager. Now let's take a quick look at EVM in action. First comes the preparation phase, 
where Sunisa will set up the assessment on the EVM web portal. While hosting and maintenance of this tool is taken care of by WHO, every country gains its own portal for secure and private access. With it, Sunisa can set up an inventory of health facilities and vaccines and use EVM's random site selection tool to ensure a representative sample of facilities is used. To also nominate assessors and start planning logistics like transport, budgets, and the assessment schedule. Through training, Sunisa will make sure everyone knows their role, has access to an EVM account, and can install and use the EVM app. Once facilities have been assigned to each team member and assessors have downloaded their questionnaires, the collection of data can begin. First, each assessor will go to their assigned facility. There, they'll complete the questionnaire by asking facility staff the relevant questions, observing and noting details, and checking equipment. Data collection doesn't need an active internet connection. Questionnaires can be uploaded when assessors are back online and in the office, then instantly turned into visualizations for more in-depth discussion and data analysis. Using the app, analyzing a facility's performance is simple and streamlined. As soon as an assessor uploads a completed questionnaire, managers can review it, approve it, and analyze the results, whether assessing individual facilities or using data to better understand the national average. Countries maintain full ownership of their data throughout this process, from data collection to the generation of an EVM report. This is just the start of a process of continuous improvement. When an EVM report is generated, it helps Robert and Sunisa assess strengths and weaknesses in their current supply chains. The report gives them the data to develop a case for supply chain investment. They can then prioritize and implement a set of interventions that improve the supply chain and continue to monitor their progress against performance metrics until the next national assessment in five years' time. During this period, Robert and Sunisa may use EVM for targeted assessments to deep dive into geographical contexts or specific criteria like temperature and waste management. And finally, by carefully planning and prioritizing actions based on these results, Robert and Sunisa can expect improved systems performance at a country level when the next national EVM assessment is conducted. This way, we can all find better solutions of improving immunization supply chains, raising the healthcare standards for entire nations for every mother and child. Why not see what EVM 2.0 can do for healthcare in your country or facility? To learn more, contact your WHO or UNICEF regional office or see how it works for yourself. Visit the EVM website, create an account and download the app today. Thank you, and now let's give the floor to Dan. Getting life-saving back. Thanks, Marcel. Um, I hope you enjoyed that uh, short video on EVM2. What I'd like to do now is discuss some of the key features of EVM2 um, that were um, alluded to in this video. Okay, so EVM2, of course, supports continuous improvement. And uh, my colleague, Dimitri, will be talking about this in a little more detail. But as you saw in the video, there's a sort of four stage process in this um, continuous improvement. The first um, that I'll be focusing on during this presentation is the assess phase. <clears throat> Excuse me, where the data collection and the review of evidence takes place that enables us to identify the supply chain strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities for improvement, and the bottlenecks. That's what um, the, the, the tool is really focusing on. The other stages, of course, are the planning stage, the implementation of, of the plan, uh, and then finally the monitoring uh, of the interventions that have taken place in order to uh, validate the, their efficacy. I want to talk in particular about six key benefits the first is country ownership. The second is about the uh, improvements in our software tool that have reduced the assessment burden on countries of conducting an EVM assessment. The third is this new feature of EVM2, which is called subnational management. I'll talk about that in a minute. 
The fourth is the fact that in EVM2, EVM2 is a tool for everyone. Anyone can download it and use it. The fifth is again, like the um, second point, it's leveraging advances in technology to provide more insights and greater clarity on the supply chain performance. And sixth and finally, we'll, we'll discuss how EVM2 is better aligned with the improvement planning uh, activities and can support that. So the first point, country ownership. With EVM2, countries can assess any aspect of their supply chain in whatever way and however they choose to do it. Of course, EVM1 is built on being a one size fits all assessment tool. No matter what country in the world you are assessing, the same questions will be asked and it will be a uniform process in order to assess the supply chain. Now that's what we call a full national assessment and it remains the global benchmark in EVM2. But with EVM2, countries can also customize their assessment to meet their specific needs. So how can they do that? Well, they can customize their assessments by type, range, sample, and scope. Um, in the video you saw, these were, so, these were described uh, or shown visually as different um, shapes of uh, cookies. Um, I use the example here of flavors of ice cream because the different flavors you can choose for EVM um, are, are, rest upon four levers. The first is type. What is the type? Well, it specifies whether you can, whether to choose a random site selection, which is the methodology that EVM1 is based upon, or whether not to use a random site selection and pick specific locations according to your need. So in EVM1, you are, or, and in EVM2, when you have a full national assessment, you are picking a random selection of facilities across the country to be a representative sample of facilities in that country in order to assess the uh, performance of that supply chain. That continues in EVM2. However, you may, you may decide that in certain contexts you wish to assess all the facilities in a particular province or district, or you may, you may only wish to assess the facilities at a particular level, maybe only the primary store or the subnational store or um, the uh, district stores, or perhaps even just the health clinics. With EVM, you can customize your tool for that. You can also customize it by range. What is the range? Well, of course, this is simply whether you wish to assess the entire country or whether you only wish to assess specific areas. Uh, these may be at the, the state level or uh, province level or the, or the district level. You have the ability to customize that. The third flavor is sample. Now, what do we mean by sample? Well, in EVM1, your choice is making a single random site selection for the entire country, which enables you to make, to assess the, the strength of that country's uh, supply chain. But you may also wish to have greater insights, not just at the national level, but perhaps at the subnational level. So perhaps you want to assess the relative strengths of your country's supply chain performance at the subnational level. If you want to do that, then you need to make individual site, single individual random site selections for each province or state. And EVM2 gives you that uh, granularity. The fourth and final way that you can adjust the, the, the flavor of your EVM experience is to um, tailor the assessment to what you wish. Now, in EVM, for a full national assessment, you will assess every aspect of your vaccine management from E1 to E9 and others. But perhaps you don't, you only wish to assess a particular component of your uh, vaccine management. Perhaps your desire is to assess your stock management or your temperature management or your waste management or your human resources or your, your SOPs and your policies or the infrastructure or your cold train equipment. If you only wish to assess a particular aspect, you can customize EVM2 to give you that very, very specific uh, lens. I'll talk very briefly now about how EVM2 reduces the assessment burden. We've made it as easy as possible for countries to manage and deliver their own EVM2 assessments, reducing the, the need for external support. Specifically, once a country has set up their EVM2 system, any number of subsequent EVM assessments can then be created within minutes. Um, and of course, 
um, perhaps the most visible aspect of EVM2 is our data collection app, which is available on all the app stores, which makes the data collection process a lot easier and simpler and quicker and ensures that the data is of a higher quality and is, is more, uh, has less uh, simple uh, user errors in it. And as the video says, WHO maintains a software, so there's no expensive um, maintenance um, required by the country to uh, maintain the EVM server, et cetera, et cetera. That's taken care of by WHO. And here's a little infographic that shows um, the, the, the architecture of the EVM tool with the, the data collection taking place typically on a mobile device, either someone's mobile phone or a tablet. Um, the web portal being the EVM2 website in the middle where the countries manage their EVM experience. And at the back end, the EVM software in a database hosted by WHO. The third benefit um, that I mentioned is this concept of subnational management, and it applies primarily to large, large countries such as India or China, or those with very um, decentralized administrative structures. In these situations, the subnational manager becomes someone who has um, importance in the EVM system. EVM supports this devolved system whereby a national manager can assign full subnational management of uh, that, that area of the country to a subnational manager. The fourth point to, to mention is that EVM2 is a tool for everyone. The insights from EVM are no longer restricted to the national EVM assessment. As a matter of fact, anyone can create their EVM account. Anyone can download the app onto their phone and anyone can assess a health facility at any level, wherever and where, whenever they want. So for example, the district store manager may wish to assess his or her facility um, independent of a national EVM assessment, um, and then um, analyze the results to, to, to see whether a, an, ac an improvement plan can, can be actioned. The fifth point here is, is uh, a little complicated and I don't have the time to go over it in great detail, but I'll say that the EVM2 framework provides a greater clarity on every aspect of supply chain performance in the country. In EVM1, nine criteria were assessed. In EVM2, the same nine criteria are assessed with the exception of the ninth and final criteria, which is now waste management in EVM2. But EVM2 assesses other criteria as well. And in summary, they are listed below. E1 to nine is concerned primarily with looking at facility operations. What does the facility, at the facility level, what does it do? M1 to M4, on the other hand, while still looking at the facility, looks at the facility management as opposed to its operations. So clearly uh, an understanding of the management functions of the facility as opposed to its op operations can be analyzed. The third set of criteria is R1 to R6, which is, a, which is concerned exclusively with looking at the performance of the national program. Um, in EVM1, the extrapola it, uh, analyses of the national program performance can be made, of course, but through the lens of the facility operations and management. In EVM2, it's uh, separated, so greater, there's greater granularity of analyses possible. Um, and if that wasn't enough, there are each of these criteria is subdivided by categories, the eight categories that you see listed below. These are the infrastructure, of the facility, for example, the building, the equipment it has, the cold chain equipment, the fridges, etc., the IT that it has within it, the human resources that are involved, the policies and SOPs and, and guidance and practices around that that's provided, the finances, and these, these are C1 to C6. These are called our input categories, which are essentially what a facility needs to be productive. The seventh and eighth relate to output and performance. The outputs are what the, what the facility does. For example, does it complete a stock ledger? Um, and the performance is the bottom line, what you might call the KPI, which is the key performance indicators of, the, of that uh, particular facility. And I don't, I don't have much time to go into this, but I show you a screenshot of one particular facility um, last year uh, that was assessed where you can see in the left-hand column, um, the criteria E1 to nine and M1 to M4. 
And on the, uh, the top row, you can see the categories and a matrix grid that we call a heat map that gives you the ability to understand the, the performance of that facility um, in any uh, at great detail. And if we were on the website now, I could click one of these cells and underneath it, I could see the, uh, the various EVM uh, requirements that make up this score and drill down to the exact cause of, uh, if there's a low score, you will understand the cause of the low score. If there's a high, you will understand the cause of the high score. Finally, before I wrap up, I just talk about the alignment with improvement planning activities that's gonna be covered a little bit more detail shortly. What I've just shown you is just one of the dashboards in EVM2 uh, called the heat map, but there's a whole set of other sophisticated dashboards that provide much more uh, in-depth uh, analysis. It also includes the availability, quality and efficiency um, analysis reporting if, if you wish to view your supply chain performance through that lens. And the final point is that EVM, an EVM report template can be automatically generated from an EVM, uh, the assess EVM assessment data, which provides um, the team responsible for coming up with an improvement plan based on the EVM assessment with a really useful tool to save them time and give them a really good head start in providing their, uh, identifying their improvements um, that they can do. So you, if you want to learn more, then you can take EVM for a test drive today. You can download the app on uh, your phone. Um, just type in EVM Assessor and you should be able to find it on the Android Play Store or the Apple uh, iOS Store. Or you can create an account on the EVM2 website. And if you need any more information on EVM, we've made a topics page available on the TechNet website where you can find all of the resources that have been produced so far for EVM2, including user guides, um, training um, presentations, um, SOPs, um, videos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if you really want to become a power user, I encourage you to join our EVM2 group on TechNet, which is providing regular updates and support from the EVM2 community of how to um, deal with problems and get the most out of EVM. So with that, I wrap up and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Dan. And now we move to Saul's presentation. Um, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Maricel. And thank you, Dan, for this exhaustive uh, uh, introduction to the EVM. Mm. Dan. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the, as you can see, the, the EVM now has become a really a comprehensive package uh, just with, that is developed that to support countries. And it's have been developed in a way that you, you just need only, the country will just need only the first, the first start, what we call the onboarding to, once they are onboarded, they can manage entirely the system and the subsequent uh, uh, um, EVMs. You know, the EVM2 was launched in um, last year, March, um, and made available for the countries. And since then, we started receiving, we started receiving a lot of requests, many requests from the countries for support to organize those onboarding uh, to be able to conduct this EVM. And more still requests will be coming for 2021. But you know that since March, we are in the context of the COVID and providing support and guidance to countries remain currently, currently with, the, uh, with this context, a challenge due to the, uh, we don't have the possibility for the uh, HQ in-person support. This is not longer possible because of we have uh, COVID-19 has imposed travel restriction uh, for global teams. And secondly, we have presently very few consultants that can be uh, considered uh, as expert for EVM uh, to use. To compensate those, those um, shortcomings, we have, uh, as Dan has highlighted, developed a strong set of online learning resources that have been developed, this including a full set of, of uh, training materials and user guides so that country guests can, can use and any consultant that we can recruit, the few consultants we have,
can develop uh, those onboarding of, of countries using these online, online uh, learning resources. We are in the process of uh, developing a pool of consultants uh, that will be trained to support while a long-term uh, solution is being thought. Um, for, for instance, uh, Dimitri was uh, thinking on uh, supporting and creating uh, institutionalization in different regions by identifying uh, institutions that can be onboarded and support a uh, closer uh, support to the country regions. Uh, but I have to mention that uh, the comprehensive package that Dan had just presented, once the country uh, get experience with that EDM2, they have uh, the power to manage themselves uh, then on because they, the system is really easy to use and, and comprehensive enough. And I think that uh, this was just the small um, uh, insight um, with providing how we are organizing to, to continue support in this context of, 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 uh, of COVID uh, pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Solo. I just want to remind the audience that you can start posting your questions in the chat box. So at this point in time, uh, we will now take a closer look on how EVM is used at the country level. So we have, uh, we are going to feature two countries, Iraq and Nigeria, and we will start with Iraq because it has, it's uh, one of the first countries that use the new EVM2 tool. So Dr. Firas, um, can you please tell us about the assessment? When did you conduct the EBM and was it your uh, first time to do it? What was your purpose for doing it? Dr. Fires? Uh, I would like to thank uh, you for this opportunity to meet our colleagues from the headquarters from UCF and, uh, and, uh, and WHO. Uh, we are working together uh, from the first time uh, to develop this uh, uh, EVM uh, tool. Uh, actually, uh, uh, we are proud uh, to be the first country conducted uh, such uh, uh, assessment. Uh, 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 we are successfully conducted complete and uh, a comprehensive EF, uh, EVM tool assessment followed by, uh, by a Continuous improvement plan. Right now, we have a, a continuous improvement plan uh, for three years, and this uh, plan uh, incorporated with uh, uh, CMYB. Uh, the assessment conducted in June uh, uh, 2019, uh, and there, uh, there were a lot of efforts had been uh, done before. Uh, we worked closely with the EVM Global team uh, from WHO and UNICEF headquarters also from UNICEF country office and our partner from uh, IFNET. Uh, we are work hardly for many uh, months uh, to, uh, uh, to start uh, uh, our uh, assessment in Iraq. Uh, mainly uh, there are uh, three uh, steps uh, in conducting such uh, assessment in Iraq. In, in June, we're starting in June tw uh, 2019, Training about 40 uh, national assessors uh, by regional uh, and uh, headquarter experts, uh, also uh, by consultant and UNICEF Iraq uh, and national uh, country manager. We, we, we have three uh, uh, national country managers, and uh, by uh, July 2019, content EVM. A, to, uh, to include a sample of, uh, consists of one primary uh, store and seven, 17 subnational and 44 uh, Aldi stores and uh, about uh, 35 uh, uh, service points. In August, uh, after the, we uh, getting the results of the EVM, we start uh, on, the, on developing a, a national uh, com uh, comprehensive or continuous uh, improvement plan. Uh, hopefully, uh, we developed the uh, continuous improvement plan, but unfortunately, during the COVID-19 
suspend some of, but no, uh, not all activities, some of the activities suspended during the current pandemics. Uh, regarding the first EVM assessment, uh, or have you conducted other previously? Uh, this is the EVM2 assessment. This is the uh, uh, the only one officially conducted in Iraq. Uh, previously, we have a, a, a journey uh, started with EVM1 in 2016 to onboard uh, immunization supply chain officer at the national level. And uh, we uh, we done a, a tremendous effort and activities conducted to improve the immunization supply chains and to prepare the country for EVM implementation uh, uh, toward the uh, continuous improvement. Thank you, over. Thank you very much, Dr. Frias. And now I would like to ask a question to uh, Engineer Moher. Uh, for other countries wishing to conduct an EVM assessment, what advice would you give? Yeah. Can you please unmute your mic? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Uh, actually, our advice to them uh, is not to wait too long and to start planning uh, to implement this comprehensive assessment because of its great impact on improving uh, the vaccine supply chain, uh, especially since the world is now start knowing the importance of vaccine as it will be the, the only solution for uh, to stop the pandemic that world is uh, currently suffering from. Over. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Moher. And now we move to uh, Nigeria. Dr. Haj Hajia, uh, can you also please tell us about the assessment, uh, your experience about EVM2? When was it conducted? Like, when uh, was it the first time that you did it? And what type of assessment have you done? <laughs> Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. Is it Nigeria now? Yes, please. OK, thank you. So Nigeria uh, did an onboarding of EVM A 2.0 in January 2020. And since we finished the onboarding, we have been doing targeted assessment using the EVM 2.0 tool at national and subnational level. So the targeted assessments were developed by the NLWG. The last targeted assessment we did commenced in April, but it has been prolonged now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of officers could not go out, so they started the assessment for their subnational levels, but it's been prolonged, they haven't finished it. So Nigeria has previously conducted three EVMs using EVM 1.0. So we did one in 2010, another one in 2014, and in 2017. Now the type of assessment that we have conducted. So we have conducted targeted assessments with about 273 sites. So we did at the national level using our national strategic cold storm. Our zonal stores will actually have five levels. So we have done at the National Strategic Cold Store, the Zonal Stores, the State Cold Stores, the LGA Cold Stores, and some few health facilities. This last selection was done in such a way that compromised areas were secluded. So that is one of the flexibilities that we have seen with the EVMA 2.0 tools. How was the EVM, uh, I understand that you had a previous assessment with the old tool, the EVM1. How, mm -hmm. how do you find it different from the new tool? So the old tool was paper-based. So after collecting the data on paper, they will have to sit down and enter in the data that we collected. But this one is a mobile application. So you just enter it into your mobile. And with this EVM 2.0, the site selection is automated. So you don't have to start worrying, um, worrying about selecting the sites. The EVM 2.0 selects the sites for you. 
and then you have the ability to conduct targeted assessment. So you, have to, you don't have to go through the whole EVM2. And then there's uh, automatic generation of the results. So you don't have to do the analysis by yourself. It, con it generates a heat map for you. And then it gives you site-specific continuous improvement plans. Thank you. So how do you plan to use the result of EVM2 assessment? So actually, we have started using the results of the EVM2 assessment. As I'm talking to you now, like I said initially, uh, Ahmed is in Abuja, we are in Nasarawa state. So the first thing that the EVM 2.0 showed us was that we had inadequacy of SOPs. So right now we are having a workshop where we are developing SOPs based on the EVM 2.0 targeted assessment that we did. And then it was also able to show us our capacity gaps at the subnational level. And now with the EVM 2.0, we can conduct regular inventory. And it has given us improvement in archiving of our data. It has even triggered us to be monitoring the disk indicators. And then uh, also our plant preventive maintenance. The EVM 2.0 has helped us to be conducting it as per schedule. And it has helped us to update all our ledgers for antigens, diluents, and dry material. So we are using it for all these things. So immediately we did the targeted assessment. We're able to see where our gaps are at the national level. And we have encouraged subnational levels too, to do the same. Thank you, Dr. Haji. And do you have like um, also words for our audience, especially for those countries who are planning to conduct an EVM? What message would you give them? So for countries that are planning to conduct the EVM, the first thing I will give the, uh, the first advice I will give them is that they should have a functional national logistics working group before they conduct it. And then also when they are doing the onboarding, like we did in Nigeria, we didn't only onboard the national level officers. We also included the subnational level officers so that everybody would be on the same page when the onboarding is being done. And then the CIP should be conducted on subnational level so that we know the gaps and what is needed for improvement at the subnational levels. And then it can be consolidated into a national level. And one other thing we did in we have been doing in Nigeria is that our continuous improvement plan we have included it into our national EPI plan and even the national strategic health development plan. So we have found that it has made the implementation easier for us. Thank you very much, Gia, Dr. Firas and Engineer Moher. Uh, indeed, COVID-19 really affected the country's uh, activities on EVM assessment, but it does, as, as uh, Kone showed in his slide, it doesn't stop countries from, from continuously uh, doing the assessment. So thank you for all the messages that you have for the countries. And now let's move to the final presentation. Dimitri, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And as if the uh, EVM assessment was not a challenge of its in itself and not a challenge enough, then there is, of course, uh, what to, what, where the assessment results go to and what they need to translate into. Next slide, please. The translation of assessment findings to measurable program improvements is a complex challenge. And the two quotes in front of you now illustrate the gap, the prevailing gap. Uh, Bridging this challenge requires engagement at all levels. Next slide, please. So EVM2 is inherently democratic and accessible as the presentations uh, have just illustrated. And it makes it an opportunity uh, to engage the workforce at all levels and to do, to do it continuously. So the engagement includes localized use of the tool to gauge continuous progress of improvements within these five-year national assessment brackets. Um, to use uh, EVM2 uh, um, on, for targeted assessments between the cycles, um, and that can be done within any, at, at, at any population site, including down to just the facility level or district level. So EVM2 is also a capacity development platform. Um, it contains all the questions with all the answers on what uh, effective vaccine management uh, is and all the best practices. And it is also a networking platform which makes it valuable for broad range of users and thus an element of culture change. Next slide, please. So 
continuous improvement plan, CIP, continues to be pivotal to the pro process, to this process of continuous improvement, but it, its complexity remains a challenge. And I would say that um, while countries have embarked on the implementation of EVM2, we have years of experience with a previous uh, tool, the original EVM, and the challenges remain the same. Uh, next slide, please. So getting it right after the assessment um, uh, requires planning and focus. And here are some of the recurring issues uh, that uh, are coming up when we interview, work with uh, countries uh, to interview uh, uh, teams on what the challenges are. And you can see here, some of them are related to stakeholder engagement, making sure that different the elements of the planning are in place, funding, uh, prioritization, uh, the quality of analyses, etc. cetera. Um, there is, however, an opportunity to leverage the inherent value of EVM2 app to individuals and the program they run. And a quote here from uh, Dr. Gupta from Gavi uh, showcases the, uh, the ambition. So the capacity development, the measurable link to improve performance, all these can serve to rally the many talents within the program at all levels, nationally and nationally, as champions of continuous improvement. And next slide, please. So the new EVM tool opens up two ways to link assessments to the continuous improvement plan. The, they are mirror images and they have their pros and cons. And so you can kind of look at this now and I will uh, walk you quickly through this. So on the left side is the um, process that is anchored on the development of the national level plan and building the so-called movement for continuous improvement top down. So basically you start with a national assessment as most countries do as a rallying point for the program to mobilize resources, uh, harness political support within the countries and globally, and then develop a plan, and then use them, the EVM2 can be used for uh, the um, uh, continuous monitoring of this plan as using, using uh, subnational assessments um, between the uh, five-year goalposts can be done every year. Uh, the second uh, uh, option is on the right, and this is to uh, build CIP up from a localized start. And that's what Iraq did. Iraq have never had a previous assessment. EVM2 was their first assessment. And what they did was they started small. They started through learning by doing. They took the app and they uh, um, started practicing the underlying uh, um, criteria and making contextualizing the content of the EVM for, at their local level. And then when they were ready, they went for the full national assessment. And so these are the two um, approaches that uh, you can consider in your uh, practices. And we are ready to support you, COVID and all. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dimitri, and thank uh, also for the rest of our panelists today. So for the audience, uh, we really encourage you to visit the link provided by Dan and see what EVM has in store for you. So at this point, we can start uh, entertaining questions. Okay, uh, I have um, checked the chat box and there are interesting questions already uh, put there. So the first question is, uh, I think there's a lot of interest about the onboarding. Um, and I address these uh, questions to Solo and maybe Dan and Dimitri can uh, supplement. So uh, can you say more on the training of consultant on EVM2? What will be the criteria to be eligible for this training? And what are the procedures for the onboarding? Solo? Yeah, uh, thank you, um, <clears throat> um, Maricela, and thank you all for this for first joining the this exciting session. Uh, the training for the EVM um, assessment, the training of the assessor, I think as the EVM one, uh, the country preferably we should se select uh, program staff or 
any staff who has knowledge of immunization system and preferably uh, the supply chain, the cold chain and the vaccine management uh, uh, practices. Um, this is the, 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 base, the baseline condition actually. So um, of course today if, if EVM2, uh, as Dan has shown it, the, all the data processing and collection is based on the mobile mobile app. And I don't, I cannot imagine that there are still some people that may not have um, at least a phone or a tablet who is not that. If not, I think a compliment should be given to people how they can use these, these new, new, new tablet or, or smartphone just for, for data collection. Uh, maybe I thought that Usman has some compliment or Dimitri or um, Dan, you can compliment uh, what, what other criteria you see here. Nothing from me, I think you covered it so well. Yeah, I think I'll just uh, add one or two uh, points to that, but I think Solo, you covered it. I think looking at um, the consultant, of course, our goal is that um, we, we hope that the reliance on consultants by countries will be minimized because this is a, uh, a tool that we're hoping countries will manage. Um, and the, the key aspect of that is the fact that when once you do the administration of learning the tool um, and building your country setup, after that administrative process to begin with, you, you can then create many EVM assessments very quickly. And therefore, um, the, the burden on the country is to um, train the, the team at the beginning uh, in order to become up to speed. And of course, um, we hope we will need to rely on consultants um, for, to fulfill that role, but long term, we're we're aiming for uh, for country ownership of, of this tool. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, there is a comment from Usman. Uh, Usman is also quite experienced in EVM. Uh, Usman, can you uh, would you like to express your uh, comment? Oh, thank you. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, no, Dr. Solo has responded to everything here. The importance of uh, uh, the training people, having staff being trained, like the case we did in Nigeria uh, prior to the assessment, even though there are for each of the questions some uh, hints uh, where you can see what it means, I think uh, is important that uh, the staff also should be refreshed on what is uh, 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 happening in the immunization uh, area. So the other thing that I wanted also is, <laughs> as we talk about EVM, we need also to think about other assessment, supply chain assessment. The CIP uh, that uh, uh, Dimitri was talking about, I think uh, should be uh, linked also at country level when doing the analysis at the end with the other assessments like the NCA from uh, um, USAID, for example, tools, etc. So because when you develop something, uh, you need to look holistically on sustainability of the supply chain overall in country. Over. Thank you, Asman. So there's also an interesting question about the CIP because there's a lot of materials available for EVM. So there's a question from Zaina. What about training materials for CIP? And uh, Dimitri, could you answer yes. this question? Yes, thank you very much. And thank you, Zaina, for the question. So the a couple of points here. Of course, uh, undoubtedly, we are considering and we will uh, prioritize the next step of the guidelines. EVM2 assessment has been a challenge in itself. And as you can see, we're still uh, uh, pulling, pulling together the EVM2 uh, external website, for example, is still being uh, developed. So it's a, please bear with us. And of course, we will uh, revisit uh, um, the guidelines and uh, provide additional um, uh, package for countries on the CIP. But I think one, one important point on the CIP is that uh, CIP is an important uh, document to uh, pull together the results of the assessment and development plan. The other aspect there is all those elements of the capacity development that is being uh, that are being brought up, you know, including, for example, the need to monitor 
uh, uh, the quality and build the capacity of the quality and uh, of the data collection. So um, all these aspects are actually requiring a, a plan that perhaps will be the, you know, it's not just the CIP for immunization supply chain, it will be the plan for the broader, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the sort of the, the, con the content or that will go probably to Gavi HSS proposals and sort of bigger national health systems plans that will actually uh, focus on and unpack and focus on this uh, support to countries for the continuous um, uh, mentorship, support, and uh, learning for the assessors, and ultimately the assessors are the workforce really uh, in the country. So the workforce at all levels to be delivered continuously. So we're trying to move, as you saw, uh, the focus or well, shifting, expanding rather the focus from the narrow remit of you know we just need to get the plan done and uh, the assess based on the assessment uh, one once every five years to a more continuous engagement. And there we're hoping that with the uh, positioning of this app uh, and the tool for not only uh, uh, once every five year full, full assessments, but also uh, targeted self-assessments that can be done uh, at any level uh, with targeted samples. We're hoping that this will be uh, a good enough uh, pitch from countries to the partners and donors and to their own ministries of finance uh, to uh, support these uh, investments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitri. And then we have two questions that uh, I, I, uh, I think it's more appropriate for our country colleagues to answer. So first, I would like to address to Nigeria. Uh, the question is regarding the involvement of assessors and, bi uh, assessors and biases errors in data. How can you compare EVM1 versus EVM2? Anyone from our colleagues in Nigeria? Uh, I said earlier, the EVM one is paper based. So first we enter into the data into the paper, and then we have to now it into Excel. So it was time consuming. But for EVM two, it's mobile based, and then for EVM two, as you are entering in the data, you get your site specific continuous improvement plan. So the only thing you have to do at the national level is to collect the improvement plans. On like EVM1, where you collect the data, do the analysis, and then start bringing up the improvement plans. I hope that has answered the question. Thank you very much. And then we still have time. So um, I would like to address this to Iraq. Uh, how costly in e is EVM2? Um, I think you cannot compare to even one because you have not conducted yet, but um, can you give us an idea how much it costs you to implement EVM2 over to Iraq? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, actually, the, uh, for the cost of implementation, uh, uh, comparing with EVM1, uh, there is nothing additional just to replace the paper paperwork paper-based uh, uh, assessment with the mobile application. So uh, as uh, Dan explained to us, uh, we you can use your tablets, your mobile phone. Uh, even in the Windows, there is a, a version uh, for EVM. Uh, you can use the laptop uh, to uh, uh, make the assessment and then get the results, sub submission to the results. The, uh, the of the assessment and after that make the anal analysis as uh, uh, colleagues from Nigeria said, approve the assessment and uh, finish. Over, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there, a, I don't see any more question, but um, I, I think Dimitri would like to add more. About yes, just cost. thank you very much. Yeah, to Engineer Mutter's point, the, um, uh, the, the cost is, uh, I, I, I saw the, the, the question about the cost is very relevant, uh, but the, the, the answer is really, it's a bit of a cheeky one. It's, it, it's, it all depends what you are building, right? So with the VM1, 
costs were the ones that we programmed around once every five years uh, engagement and there was international mission so you know there's a there's a package right now the minute you start uh, uh, using the new tool and exploring the use cases for the new tool you realize that you can do much more and uh, you can do uh, you realize that you have not had that opportunity before just because the technology was not there remember the new tool now is democratic it's very easy now to upload and everybody in the in the in the government system uh, if they want they can actually upload and explore the tool on their own they can use the tool for self assessment of their own facilities districts you know regions uh, uh, they don't you know and once you do it a couple of times you actually you, you become a, a self taught expert right of course you know you need to provide some uh, uh, supports to make sure that that gets to that point but once it's there then you are exploring a totally different you start you know a totally different sort of palette of options and that may in a long time may cost more but you you're not comparing apples for apples right? if, 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 if you see what i mean thank you thank you very much dimitri that's a very important point and uh, at this point i would like to appreciate those audience who are posting appreciation on the evm2 and uh, we still have two minutes left so uh, may I ask anyone from our speakers uh, solo dan dimitri if you have final words for our audience over dan uh, sure. Yeah, I, I just um, just going back to that uh, cost point. I think um, that EVM two is certainly no more expensive than EVM one. Um, looking at the, as Dimitri says, I reiterate his point about the um, this, this. It depends where you want to go with it. If you want to assess every facility of, in the country, then of course that will be more expensive than assessing a representative sample. But I think for the um, for all the um, extra benefits you get from EVM two. Um, the, the, the cost is, is largely uh, removed through the benefits of the, um, the data collection tool. So um, in, in closing, I just want to say thanks to everyone for participating. And just to reiterate, please go um, and test out EVM for yourself. You can download it on your phone. Uh, the data collection app, that's the data collection part only. If you really want to become a power user, maybe you're looking to uh, become a consultant, then um, please uh, go, go to the website, uh, create your account. If you have any trouble, you can contact uh, me um, or, or others in the EVM Secretariat. You can assess an entire country if you really want to, uh, or an area or just your own facility, be it a health clinic or a primary store or a district store. Uh, you can do it yourself to, to test it out and become a power user. So uh, thank, thank you very much. And uh, now I think we have to go back to the closing uh, um, plenary.